Hi, everyone who's watching. Uh, my name is Philip, and I'm the head of marketing ops in Visual Composer. Um, we decided to share expert views on how to become a more successful um, web creator, web developer, website uh, builder, not in the sense of a tool, of course, but as a person, as an expert. So um, as one of our first experts that we've invited to talk about that topic of becoming a more successful web, web creator, today here I have Hans Skilreth, right? Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Oh, awesome. Nailed it. From, awesome. from Thermagedon, right? And uh, we've invited him because recently we've um, had a chance to uh, listen to one of his, uh, to, 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 to a great talk of his uh, at, at an online event. And Hans is somebody, somebody who had a very successful web agency and knows a bit about how, how to actually scale a web, web, um, web development business, right? So Hans, to, 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 to start off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what you're working on currently and how, how your whole, um, yeah, Odyssey with web development looked like so far? I'd be happy to. Um, thanks for having me on. I'm honored to be one of the first uh, people that are being looked at as potential, you know, guiders to of how best to run website agencies. And let me get it, you know, straight. I had my challenges. Like it, it, the web agency life is a very up and down type uh, experience. You have great days and then you have terrible days. Um, and 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 what I'm hoping we can uncover today is hopefully some advice to help you not fall into some of the pitfalls I found and only have more and more success. So it, hopefully we'll be able to drive into that a little bit today. Um, but yeah, my background, I ran a 12 person web design agency in downtown Chicago for seven years. Um, I sold that business in 2019 because my other company, Termageddon, was kind of hitting off. Uh, we create privacy policies. We have an agency partner program. We give agencies a free auto updating privacy policy for life. That's the only sales pitch I'll do. Everything else will be just uh, uh, agency partnership uh, or agency optimization. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I experienced a lot over seven years uh, running an agency. There's a lot of mistakes I made in years one, two, three, and four that I wouldn't think, you know, after year five, six, seven, I would have never done it again. And that's what I'm hoping to teach today is just how to get to building a more scalable agency without while trying to avoid some of the pitfalls I experienced. So uh, we were kind of joking about it earlier. If I can prevent you from losing all the hair that I've lost, <laughs> I've done my job, so. Excellent. That's exactly where uh, we want to help. Um, we want to help people starting out or maybe struggling for a while. It's um, these are things that are not you're not like born with the knowledge of how to how to run an efficient business in general, well, and, let alone a web agency, right? So. Exactly. And I got to also note, I actually used Visual Composer for, with every single website project I did. So oh, uh, I'm honored to be here. <laughs> Perfect. Um, thanks so much. We're super happy to have you. Um, so, can I can I ask you first off, what was your primary method of kind of acquiring clients? Uh, were you doing any sort of uh, proactive uh, outreach? Did you have a, even a sales team at a certain point? Because 12, 12, 12 people agencies actually, yeah, it's a, it's a sizable business, right? So. Did you get to that point where you were reaching out to people? Were you also doing any kind of marketing? Can you can you walk us through a little bit through that? Yeah. So uh, when we when I started off, I had just left Groupon. Uh, Groupon is like a coupon website where they offer discounts on local businesses. Um, I loved Groupon at the beginning, but after a while, it kind of just felt icky to me. It felt like we were discounting small businesses just to give them an online presence. Um, and I felt like small business owners needed a little bit more of a, a helping hand, someone who can walk them through what it's like to create an online presence. So I started off by saying, I do everything. I'll do social media, I'll do ads, I'll do SEO, I'll do websites, I'll do copy, I'll do your emails, I'll set up your emails and all that stuff. Um, that's mistake number one, is that when you spread yourself out too thin, you're going to find yourself being uh, mm -hmm. average at best uh, with every single service that you offer. So as time went on, we figured out, okay, actually let's focus on just a few things, 
maybe even just one thing and form partnerships with other companies who do the other stuff. And that's how we can be strategic. And then all of a sudden we became a lot more profitable and our operating procedures became a lot more easy. Um, but it all started off with, you know, opening up our doors and, you know, maybe reaching out to some family and friends. I'm not afraid to talk to people. So I just went, I, I physically walked into some stores at the very beginning. Uh, I'd walk mm -hmm. into stores and say, hey, I noticed this is what you currently have. This is what I'd like to build you. And what do you think? And my rates were too low. I, I charged way too little. I'm guessing people watching this probably have found themselves in the same position get paid for what you're worth and, and charge the right price. We can get more into that later. But it all started off with just uh, motivation. I just didn't want people to be discounted by Groupon. I wanted to help them with their online presence. And, um, you know, from there, uh, that's how it all started. We got a few cold deals done where I just, you know, we built a website. And then all of a sudden they start referring your friends to you, which is nice. You know, always encourage your clients like, hey, if you had a good experience, like we'd love to you know, the best compliment we can get is another referral. Um, so it started with like a referral, like from clients that we built websites for, they would just send us business every now and then, which is great. Mm. Ultimately, what we ended up doing though, was we, we, we got rid of, we were offering 30 services, like digital marketing for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, search engine optimization, off page and on page. The list goes on and on and on. And uh -huh. what we decided, about year four was let's just do web design and hosting and maintenance. That's it. Let's just build awesome websites and let's support those with some ongoing maintenance plans. And the moment we condensed our services just to one thing, we were so afraid that, oh, we're going to lose all this business, but the exact opposite happened. Um, because what we did was we found partners that do the things we don't do and um, they do the stuff we don't do so we could send business to and from each other. So I wasn't running my agency in downtown Chicago. And I'll give you the thing that changed my career was I Google searched web uh, digital marketing companies, Chicago mm -hmm. minus web design. And I say minus the minus symbol because it anti searches that keyword. Right. So the results I got for people that do digital marketing, but don't do web design. And I'd reach out to them and say, hey, I noticed you don't, I noticed you are a digital marketing firm, so you're all about return on investment. I'd imagine you have clients that come to you that have bad websites where if you spend a bunch of ad dollars, you're not gonna convert great. Let us be the company to first build a brand new website for them that converts excellently so that you can have the most bang for your buck when, when launching digital marketing campaigns. Now, not everyone signed up with that concept, but I did get five or six agencies that did. And those okay. digital marketing companies would contact me like every other week usually, um, and they'd say, hey, I got a client. Uh, they're a brand new client. Their website's terrible. Um, they have an eight page website and their budget's $15,000 for an eight page website. Can you do that? And we're like, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. No problem. So <laughs> when we started partnering up with people who had an incentive to send leads our way, we now had a warm lead with a mat, typically with way bigger budgets mm -hmm. and they needed us to help build websites for them so that they can run their digital marketing successfully. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a network of people recommending uh, us to their clients and um, that was very fruitful and something I'd recommend. I love to hear that you're touching on so many topics and actually things that we try to share uh, to web creators that want to grow. And th the interesting thing is how really all of these levers for growth are really connected. So if you want to grow better, you do need to yeah, qualify your clients better, which is kind of like our topic today. But also, uh, if you want to grow, it really helps to align with others, right? Uh, and knowing where you can kind of really provide value versus trying to, you know, put your hands on all of the holes for a business. Yes. I think that's all of these things are like equally kind of important. And it's like once you learn them, you're, you can definitely up level. Um, so it's super cool to hear that from your mouth. And it's really great to hear how you use also referrals. As, as, a, as a basically good, you use good work as a, as a kind of a lever to get more business. I, th I don't think there's anything better uh, in terms of growing than happy customers who bring you 
your uh, who bring you more potentially happy customers. Uh, but then you also did a kind of a proactive um, outreach, and um, yeah, you maybe didn't kind of do cold calling, but you 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 took it in a kind of um, proactive way to, to talk to other businesses. So that's amazing. We we talk a lot about that, and we plan to talk about more about that on our blog. So just wanted to get that out of the way. It's amazing. Thanks so much. Um, did you? Um, Oh, like, did you know, uh, how did you approach qualifying clients uh, once you kind of had growth and you knew maybe who you serve best? Uh, did, did you, did you, was that a, like a discovery uh, for you or did you know it, did you kind of get trained for that? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So as time went on, we realized that you, I have an assumption that most web agency owners really just want to help people out. I, I have a really fundamental belief that that is the case and that agencies, because they just want to help people, they tend to not value their own time and their own well-being. And that can stretch you out very thin and it can burn you out because you get tired of being poor and doing everything for your clients and they don't even really appreciate it and it's just mentally too much. Oh, yeah. What can help solve that? is that you need to realize that you need to be paid for your time. And that's a lot easier said than done when you're, you, all you wanna do is just help people, but you need to get paid for your time. And the best way to do that is to know that you need to have a filtering process when selecting a client to work with. Because we all know a website, like a new website project, they wanna pay you 10 grand or five grand or whatever it is, you're so excited to say yes. But if you say yes to the wrong project, it can mentally drain you. And that's another part of this project. It's not just about the money, it is about do I see this potential client being a positive impact on my business, my, my clients, my, my staff's mental health, my own mental health? Do I find myself wanting to work with this person? And, and, and I think it's, it's important to understand any website project, you can't just ha have a client say, yep, I need a new website, this is what I do. I'll see you in two weeks when the website's launched. Like that just, at least I'm not aware of technology that can do that. Like it, they, they have ideas, they have things in their mind that they want you to cover, uncover and put onto the website. So you need to understand as well as the client that they're gonna have to be a part of the web design experience. They have to provide feedback and insights into what they do, why they're different from their competitors and all that. So you need to vet out the clients that are gonna drag you down, expect the world of you, and not wanna pay you for it. And I think you do that by creating what I call a red flag list, which is filtering out all the people that are high risk of, um, of, of becoming mm -hmm. a, a nightmare client. So, and, and I wrote some out, should I read those off or anything like that? Uh, yeah, definitely, please do. I mean, that's amazing. Um, please go on, yeah. Yeah, awesome. So. Um, you know, when it comes to red flags, I think it's all about reducing risk of scope creep because that's really what can get very costly with a business. So what I personally like, and I'll, maybe I can share my screen even. Yeah, uh, please do. Yeah, definitely. Whatever uh, helps. Sure. Can you share my screen okay? Or can you see my screen uh, okay? Yeah, I can, I can see it. It's amazing. Awesome. So, all right, I'm actually going to scroll up to the top here, which is first you have to figure out what you are or what they actually need. And why I say that is because clients will always come to me, would always come to me and be like, I want the prettiest website in the world. And that's all they talk about. And then right before site launch, they're like, oh, what about SEO? Like, what can you do for SEO? Like, like it's just all of a sudden I just click a button and then there's SEO. Like, that's not reality. And, and so I think the first thing you need to do is, understand the true scope of the project. So what functionalities are needed? Contact forms, analytics, newsletter signups, e-commerce components, um, will customers have to log in anywhere? Um, will training and support be needed? Do you, do, does the prospect have staff members that need to be trained on the back end of the website and how to operate it. That little thing right there could be hours of work, maybe even days or weeks of work uh, keeping customers or uh, staff, uh, training staff. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, do you have any subdomains? This one sounds so stupid, but I'll tell you, I had a project that was about like a 10K project. We had the website was going great. They were so happy. We were about to launch it. And then they're like, well, what about our subdomain? And we're like, what, what subdomain? And I guess they had clients.domainname.com, which was like a full-blown e-commerce platform that they never mentioned once in the entire scope of the project. And they were just assuming we were going to launch a subdomain that we had no idea ever existed. So that one little question can massively prevent you from misquoting a project. Ask about that. search engine options. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Ask about search engine optimization. Don't wait for them to bring it up to you. If they're not talking about SEO, ask them. Because you need to understand if you need to be building the website with SEO in mind. Um, do you need to bring in a contractor to help with that is, is, is something that we did. Maybe that's what you should consider too. Um, what assets do you currently have in place? So do they have logos, branding guidelines, um, user flows? Like do they know what each type of user visiting the website is going to do? Um, oftentimes clients would have their direct, they would have, prospects that like are just going to be a general direct client, but then they want a portal for resellers or affiliates to access mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and understand, you know, wholesale rates and stuff like that. So understanding um, what users are even, um, they know who they're targeting and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, who's writing the copy? This one is huge, huge, because if they're expecting you to write the copy, you better be prepared to either write it yourself or get a contractor involved to write it. Or if you're relying on them to write the copy, are they prepared to spend the time needed to update copy um, as you work through designs with your client? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna be the point of, oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, no, I wanted to say, um, I know that kind of firsthand because uh, this is not really about me, but I did the work for, yeah, more than several years as a uh, marketing consultant, and mm -hmm. I did get also web, uh, yeah, web development kind of inquiries uh, in the past. Perhaps way in the past, <laughs> I wasn't so good at defining exactly what I do as well, and maybe websites were kind of part of it. And that just really strikes uh, strikes the the iron for me, so to speak, because. Uh, when somebody asks you to do a website, some people will assume that you're going to write the copy. Uh, others won't. Um, it, it can be a real, um, similar to that subdomain thing, like a thing that is not discussed until it's too late. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and what we're getting to with this initial page is that it's really just a message of your professional agency. You need to know how to ask the right questions so that you quote your project correctly. Because if yeah. you underquote, you're gonna be upset, you're gonna be frustrated, and all you're gonna wanna do is just be done with the project and move on in life. And if you overquote, well, you may lose the opportunity to do business with that client, or you're gonna, it's like taking advantage of the business. Like in my opinion, I think you should just be paid for your time, be paid well for your time, mm -hmm. um, nothing more, nothing less. And it's questions like this that can help you uncover if it's gonna be, if that client, if their needs mm -hmm. match up with what you offer. I so um, who will be your point of contact in the organization? Are you gonna have to deal with every single major employee at that organization? Like, are you gonna have seven different people providing you feedback? Or are they going to have one point of contact that consolidates all the feedback and you just have a one-on-one -on -one communication yeah. with them? That little detail can have massive implications in terms of the amount of time you need to commit to the client management part mm -hmm. of the project. Mm -hmm. um, what are your expectations after launch? Do they, do they want us to maintain the website and host it and do everything? Or do they want to be knowledgeable and be able to update the, mm -hmm. policy, uh, the mm -hmm. website mm -hmm. themselves? Um, what are your expectations for design? You know, have them send you some websites because if their budget's $500 and they want a website looking like apple.com, they're the client. That's a red flag because the client is not, they're not aware of how much things cost. Um, so little questions like that. Yeah, I think. Uh, here, or we can go down to the red flags. Uh, we we can. I, I, I would love to go through each and every one of these. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, just thinking about the time i did want to say i i, um, I think i heard uh, in your one of your other talks um that you mentioned also asking do they already have a website right i don't i don't know if it's here on the the list but i think that's also like a good one right um, yeah that's that's 
I think that's down in this group. And I mean, really, uh, yes. I, it's important. It's important to understand, like, I just wrote this up. Like, this is just mm -hmm. after seven years of losing a lot of hair, and I'm like, I just kind of whipped <laughs> this up real quick. These, what you need to do is understand step one is to really, for you, it's your responsibility to understand this project mm -hmm. scope, and it's questions like this that will help you uncover the true scope of the project. And mm -hmm. then as you scroll down, uh-oh, why can't I scroll down? Oh, oh. oh there you there go. You go. <laughs> And then the next step is to understand, is this client going to drag you down or make you happy? And, and, and that is what I call a scope creep client or a red flag client. Call it whatever you want, add whatever factors you want in here. Personally, I like these ones. Are they an existing business? If they are, they have money, they have revenues, they have employees, they just need a new website. Oh, I love it because that tells me they can pay their bills. They're not gonna, Established business, businesses tend to have proper expectations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like proper budget set aside. Whereas brand new people who've never had a website, who have no idea what goes into a website are higher mm -hmm. risk. They, tep they typically will have very small budgets and expect a lot of effort out of you for that m minor amount of money. So, so it's really about the, risk management, right? It is. Uh, Mm. Yes, it, it really is. It's all about, I would still accept people that are not mm. established businesses if they are, you know, if I give them the green light instead of the red light for all the rest. These are just risks you need to understand. You need to get a, a, a you have, need to collect an understanding of, do I trust this person to like pay their bills on time, be communicative, be helpful. Um, do they have a website in place already? If they have a website in place already, that tells me that they've been through this web design experience before and they know what goes into it. Um, that's a very important thing. Whether or not they had a good experience, if they've had a experience, a single experience, that's infinitely more than no experience whatsoever. To me, that was a qualifier because we we just said no. Like if they if they don't if they've never experienced a website design process, we're just it's just too high risk for us. Like it's we can't. It's just not. It's for somebody it, else. <laughs> it is. Yeah, Maybe. that's the best yeah. way to put it. Yeah. Um, have they had any experience with previous web developers? Same exact concept. We're trying to get to the root of. Can I see myself working with this person? Um, and do they do they can they demonstrate that they've worked with other people productively? Mm. I think this is a, such a sorry to interrupt you, uh, but I just wanted to yeah, say, like, please. I remember myself well, again uh, when I was a marketer um, and beginning with the consulting business. And sometimes, yeah, you sort of even know that it's going to be high risk if they don't have previous experience. But I think this is maybe where inexperienced, uh, whatever, web developers or just freelancers trip up. They think that. They have to say yes to this person because it's going to be maybe easier to work with them or, or, or so or, or something, something like that, while it's actually the opposite, <laughs> you know, because you kind of maybe I they agree. don't have an experience. So you, you, it actually shows if you have self-esteem or not, I think, because if, if, you, if you have self-esteem, then you say no to this sort of. Yeah. Right? And, and maybe that's, you know, one of the biggest conclusions that I have for today's presentation, which is you have to learn how to say no. You have to learn how to say no. I cannot express that enough. You're probably someone who just naturally wants to help people. But if you, you aren't getting paid for your time, you are going to get mentally burnt out. And I promise you I've been there and I know what that feels like. And I have had employees that experienced that too. If you can learn how to say no earlier, I'm gonna guess that you have the chances of having a long running, very successful scaling agency um, because you don't let people that are gonna take advantage of you get through your system and pass the red flag list. You gotta say no and you gotta be firm about it when you don't, you aren't feeling it. When you're not, if it's like, okay, this is way too risky of a person or a project, you gotta learn how to say no so that you can focus your time on other opportunities. And I know that's hard because bills have to be paid and 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 you know and, and you wanna be busy, you wanna help people, but mm -hmm. it's a it when talking about the long run, you got to not let these people in because these projects typically are quoted for like a month and, and then it takes two years to get it done. And that's just mm -hmm. crippling. 
uh, to an agency. So. Oh, definitely. And I think it's just so amazing you're sharing this because people just don't know this until maybe they learn the hard way. And this way you're kind of paying it forward. And really, you know, this can really help somebody skip a long period of, you know, damaging burnout. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is so good to, to hear from somebody as, as experienced as you. Uh, I mean, again, I, thank I'm you. So, yeah, of course, I'm so happy. Like, it would just make my day to know that someone listening to this mm. saved themselves from a massive headache by, by feeling it in their gut. I don't think this project's for me. I think this person's gonna demand too much for me, not contribute, and not wanna pay. And it's just, oh, that, that's the stuff that cripples agencies. Um, it, it is, so. I've been there. I mean, when you when you do this, when you're maybe starting off, and maybe when you're not sure about saying no, you uh, and when you don't know what you know, right? Um, basically, you're, you're, you have limited knowledge and, you're you it's easy to to operate from a place of fear and say yes out of fear uh that you know you're gonna not eat next month even <laughs> who knows yes. right so that's why i think this is so important to to share um so just so people can have an easier time i mean again we're here because we like to help other people, so I think yeah, it goes. Yeah, exactly, and, and that's awesome. You want to help someone, you just need to make sure your client understands they're going to have to commit themselves to some work for a project like this, and that you need to be making sure you're getting paid for your time. Um, it's all about, it's like managing clients is really like what this presentation is to a large right. degree. Like, how do I make sure only good clients come in through my doors and that uh -huh. I have set the expectations for what I need them to do to make this project a success? Because if I provide feedback and it takes them two weeks to get me feedback, then the project turnaround time is probably quadrupled yeah. with, instead of if they responded in you know, 24 to 48 hours to your feedback. So um, key so piece. Perfect. So. I mean, one of my questions is kind of already answered, so it's just to reiterate, basically, it really pays to know what type of clients you know you shouldn't kind of associate with or shouldn't take it forward with. Or you can maybe even refer them to somebody else who you know, uh, I mean, maybe to your enemy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to your enemy. Yeah, oh, I never thought bad. of it that way. I guess you um, could send leads to your enemy. <laughs> or to a masochist. <laughs> Oh, that's so <laughs> horrible, though. That's so that's so mean. I know. But I mean, you know that actually that actually reminds me of when you do say no mm -hmm. to a client, and you do decline them because they're kind of you're not feeling it. Mm -hmm. Be respectful and just be like, look, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to teach me about this stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think our skill sets align well enough right. with what your needs are. Um, but with that said, you can go to xyz.com to find someone that may be a better fit to you. So right. um, should you send them to the enemies? I, I, I don't know, I've never <laughs> thought of that before. It's really funny to think about. But like, you know, fiverr.com, Upwork, or you know, all those um, freelance websites, like maybe you could send them there. But you know, so by saying no, give them the ability to leave and not bother you anymore. Cause you know, I like to just say no, not a good fit. Here's where you can find a good fit. I don't like to actually say why I'm saying no, because when you say why, they're going to want to ask you questions. Well, you know, I can work with that, or uh -huh. they're going to always try to give excuses. So I like to just challenge that, no, you. not a good fit. Exactly. Not a good fit. Here's where you go next. I would only provide an excuse if I wanted them to actually like maybe resolve that excuse and mm -hmm. show demonstrate to me that they can, they can fix right. that before I say before I say yes. Um, so, Perfect. I mean, I was going to ask you, do you have a sort of a uh, go-to phrase or, you know, like a email that you send out? Is that something you kind of use, the, some sort of a template like that? Or like you kind of have answered it, but uh, yeah, so no, basically no. kind of have a prepared answer for the, for the, no, uh, for the no clients is a good thing, right? Yes, and I guess what I'd say is it needs to just be simple, like three sentences. You know, mm -hmm. hi, John, 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but I, I've reviewed this project and I just can't say with confidence that this would be a good fit for us. I'm really sorry for that. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I don't want to leave you hanging. Here's a link to a website where I think you may be able to find a better fit for your business. Upon clicking submit, you know, upon posting your job there, mm -hmm. you should see dozens of people to select uh, to work with. And, and just send it that way. That way, they get the decline, they're bummed out, but then you give them something to move exactly. on with their life and hopefully never talk to you again. <laughs> right, like a consolation prize. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean- Yeah, that's a, it's, that's a it's, present it's... to yourself. <laughs> exactly, right? And also you, you still preserve or kind of, uh, yeah, you maintain your maybe good reputation. Maybe there were yes. even a referred client. And they, they walk away saying, okay, I got something out of this, right? So I yeah. think that's really, it's super wise. I love it. So much wisdom being shared here today. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask you um, a, a little bit just about your kind of uh, sales process. So, of course, you have the red flags. That's super helpful. But do you then have, did you have certain stages of the of the sales process? How many, what, what are they, if you wanna share with us today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I had sales and then I had the project. So it was the sales process and then it was the discovery phase, mm -hmm. design, development, deployment, and documentation if needed. Oh, great. The sales mm -hmm. process was the, the goal of the sales process was just to get the client to agree to just the discovery phase, which mm -hmm. might be interesting to hear. Like, why wouldn't you just quote out everything right then and there? But what we realized is we were typically giving away our discovery phase for free, where we were trying to learn about all the pages mm -hmm. they need, all the functionalities they need, all the features they need. And instead, we would pitch them on, let me give you a quote on a quote, right, let me give you a quote on creating a quote for your project, which sounds crazy. Like, why would anyone ever pay for that? But what I would tell them is, our discovery process is very in-depth. It's several calls, it is us understanding truly what you need, listing out all the pages, all the functionality, all the content, and all the design and style guides. And by the end of the discovery phase, which we charged uh, like $2,000 to like 5,000, depending on how big it was, after the discovery phase, you will have a document where then we can quote it out and you can hand that document over to any other developer and they will also be able to quote it out for you. So you're not held to us. Exactly. Obviously most people would sign up with us, but we would always uh -huh. we would sell the idea of just going through the discovery phase so right. that you have a blueprint of exactly what you actually need for your website and that will save you more time more money and more energy because your design mm -hmm. phase your development phase and your deployment phase is already figured out we already know what we need to do for every exactly. single thing so you're paying for a blueprint just like how architects build skyscrapers they don't just start building a skyscraper and then like oh i don't like that window there let's move it down there like that exactly. would be just a nightmare or that's why they create blueprints and that's why i recommend that's what was successful for us is we would charge with the sales process was all about selling the idea of paying just for a discovery phase um so everyone does it differently that's just how we did it anybody who's watching this please take this to heart this is super important um know your worth basically right is what i'm kind of hearing out of that because i think a lot of um especially solo um freelancers web developers or maybe marketers it's very easy to um sort of undervalue yourself again in that aspect and be like okay i'm this is just to get my foot through the door i'm gonna go through this process uh with them of the discovery phase and you might actually end up wasting that time so you also in, in one, on one hand, you insure yourself by paying it, uh, by asking them to pay it, right? And on the other hand, you're showing that what you're doing is really valuable to yourself, to them, and I think everybody wins by that in the end. But and, uh, I, and I, I will know when you're a one person. So for my, I had a dev shop with a team, so like we had experts that were discovery experts, design experts, development mm -hmm. experts. So we had to do it that way, but maybe your sales process as an individual freelancer is still the charge for discovery. I cannot stress that enough. You, when you give away discovery for free, people don't value it. And there is so much work 
that goes mm -hmm. into understanding every page functionality, feature, content, imagery, branding. Mm -hmm. There's so much that goes into the project before you yeah. should even start coding. Because when you start coding and then you, um, you find yourself um, having to reinvent some sort of feature that you didn't quite mm -hmm. understand, that's what's gonna cost you more time and energy. That's what's gonna stress you out more. Get it as, as much as possible predefined and then start going into the design phase and, and the development phase. I love that, yeah. And, and when, it's, when you maybe don't charge, you tend to maybe not even take it as seriously yourself, right? And so you do, a, again, a worse job and you kind of accrue what they call in like in developer world, the technical debt, right? It, it's, I think it's this, 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 the same or similar thing. So I think that's well, really if, great. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I think, think it's it great too, for people to hear um, if they didn't know. I, I agree. And think about it this way. Let's mm -hmm. say you want to charge for discovery mm -hmm. and then the client has to sit there and think if they want it or not. Yeah. Who do you think are the clients you want to work with? Are you going to are you going to want to work with the clients that are like, you know what? I respect that and I want to pay for that because I believe you when you say mm -hmm. you need to create a blueprint first. Or do you want the people who are like, well, no, isn't that like this? Isn't that what you have to ask me and like to figure out for the website project? Yeah. You by just discuss like you're you're automatically filtering out the bad customers by putting up little things like this, like and it already helps you with your project in the first place. It's just a win-win across the board. I, I know, so, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's exactly what we're what the topic of the, of our, of the, of our, uh, the yeah interview here is, and it's amazing how it's again. Everything is really connected. Once you start doing it that different way where you value yourself, like everything shifts. Um, Agreed. So I think that's great. This is it is, it's a remarkable thing. You learn how to say no, you respect yourself, and you yeah. understand, yes, I do want to fundamentally help people, but I can only do that for the long term if I'm living a life of comfortableness at the very least, financially exactly. and mentally. Exactly, exactly. Uh, well, I hope this helps uh, at least a few people. Uh, moving on to our next question, because we still have a couple to go through. Um, I wanted to ask you, so do, did you also disqualify or qualify or disqualify people based on, or, or businesses based on what type of like payment they, they expected, like hourly versus fixed? Is that something that ever played a role or was that something that you sort of dictated on your, like the terms of that you dictated on your own. How does, how did that work uh, for you? So uh, we were a project-based organization, but there's pros and cons to being both project-based and being more of an hourly rate type person. So we happen to be project-based, but there's many ways to do this and be hourly based. Like there's a lot of pros, a lot of pros to being hourly. Um, but we went the project route and the way that we managed that was that whenever in the middle of the project, especially after the discovery phase, after we've all agreed this is our project, and the client's like, ooh, can you add this page? Can you add this feature or this functionality? We'd be like, yes, we can, but we're gonna quote that out after we get this original project done. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. It's just like getting your bathroom remodeled. If you decide in the middle of the remodeling project that we all agreed to, oh, I'd, I'd actually really like a second toilet over there. Mm -hmm. If I was the contractor, I'd be like, that's great. I'm going to first get all this stuff done, and then we'll talk about quoting out that bathroom <laughs> that, 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 yeah, second toilet, exactly. uh, that you've requested. And granted, like, maybe there's like, okay, we, we have to get that second bath to toilet in there, uh -huh. and maybe you do have to get it quoted out originally, but I would always aim to having the customer understand this is the project we all agree to, all, all additional things we are happy to do, mm -hmm. but we have to do it after we get your first project done. And then and they'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So, I love that. And it might be actually hard uh, and counterintuitive to, uh, I think, to do, especially maybe in smaller teams, because it sounds like you are, uh, maybe it seems to, it seems to you that you're sort of um, limiting yourself or mm -hmm. you're, that you're gonna drive people away. But again, I think it helps you qualify people long term. Somebody who uh, didn't like it one time maybe won't re become a return customer, and then again you've done yourself a favor in a way, right? So I so customers, yeah, they. I really think um, I understand the reality, which is that you do want to help your clients with like little things here or there. It's just. Uh -huh. 
those little things can start to snowball and get more and more demanding of you. And so, of course, like do some little things here or there for the clients so they have a great experience, exactly. but know when to draw the line and be like, hey, that's too much. And 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 you got to figure that out. That's what experience is going to give you. Right. Um, uh, being able to know, okay, what they're leaning towards here, I'm going to communicate, hey, you know, uh, I didn't realize you needed this, but I, no problem, I can help. You can give them wins. Just make mm. sure you're not giving them so many that you are screwing yourself over. Exactly, and that might mean different things for different people, like on a on a role basis, but also for 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 an agency. I think you have to kind of develop that as as a team as well, probably. So yep. this is great advice. Absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, because again, clients do like when you go a little bit out, out uh, kind of out of out of. Uh, your way to help them but again that can that can be a slippery slope i think so thanks for sharing your um thoughts on that hans i want to ask you another thing um did you and your team use any specific kind of um uh, yeah models in terms of uh work? you mentioned project-based uh, work right so did you use milestones? Um, anything you, you kind of want to share around that? Anything that kind of specifically worked for you that might be helpful to others? Yeah, so as time went on, we kind of got more and more restrictive with each and every phase. So we don't go to the design phase until we know absolutely everything about what you need for the discovery phase. We don't start developing until we have the design signed off and that this is what you want. And we don't go to deployment until you've approved the entire website. So we, we have check marks where you can't pass until uh -huh. you have the previous stuff done. And those little check marks are kind of annoying. Like they're kind of like, ah, oh, I wanna, I wanna sneak this client along yeah. and just get them going. But they're there for a reason. They ensure that you know, three weeks don't go by, you're about to launch the site, and like this one thing from the discovery phase is holding you back from launching. So by putting them into like little like barriers between each phase, mm -hmm. we were able to really motivate the client, like, hey, once you get this done, we can go start designing, right. you know, and like, <laughs> and, and all that stuff. So um, that was my, that's how we did it. Um, and, and, and also yet again, with experience comes the fact that you you'll then learn kind of, okay, we're waiting on content for this one page. We're gonna approve it, but client, you need to get that done, but we're gonna start designing now. You know, th then you can start to get to, to the, art, you know, mm -hmm. um, start to play around a little bit, but, but right. start off by having people understand this is how we work. This is how I know, this, by going this route, this is based mm -hmm. on experience knowing that if, if we don't go this route, we're gonna have a higher risk project. That's higher risk for you, the client, and higher risk for us, the people performing the hours. If we stick to the plan of get this stuff done, then get this stuff done, then get this stuff done, we're gonna deliver on time, within budget, and it's gonna be great. Um, so you always wanna just bring them back to understanding those blocks that you go into. Yeah, otherwise, higher risk of burnout, I think, for everybody, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what we kinda wanna avoid here. Exactly. Perfect, I love it. And, um, maybe just for people that are kind of struggling um, or yeah wondering how they can get more long-term uh, clients do you have any sort of tips or yeah methods or, or something that works for you to kind of keep clients coming to you what, what do you think is the biggest factor there um, or what works so for you? you know i think a lot of clients come to people who design websites and they have this glorious vision for what they want to launch and then they're good to go. And I always like to share the example of, you know, when Uber launched their mobile app, they didn't just launch it and then like, okay, we're done. Like we launched an awesome app and now we're, we're good. No, they, they actually grew their development team to hundreds of developers, maybe even thousands at this point, where they're constantly improving the, the application. And I give that example to say that a website is not this thing you just launch and then it's good to go. It is something that constantly improves over time. And if you're not focused on constantly improving it and your competitors are, you're gonna lose the online presence game. So having plans in place to help your clients succeed ongoing is extremely important. 
I think it starts with like a maintenance or a care plan where you're doing hosting and maintenance and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can get to this a point where maybe your service includes writing blogs or reviewing SEO exposure or, or any of those things. Like, mm -hmm. what can you do as a service provider to help your customers keep their po keep their website up to date? I keep saying policies because now I work a term again, <laughs> but keep. Keep their website up to date um, with new stuff and, and constantly focus on Im improvements and optimization. So there's a million ways to do that. It's really about just defining what you want to do, sticking to that, and offering it to your clients so that they understand a website is a living, breathing thing that changes constantly. So I love that. Yeah, we're trying to. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not a new thing, right? Growth-driven design. We try to talk about that uh, with our readers of the, on the blog. We plan to also publish more content in the future. So uh, yeah, it sounds like the thing you're mentioning here, uh, having a longer, having a strategic um, play so that the customer doesn't even see the website from the beginning as a, as a one-time thing, which it isn't. And you know, that way, again, it's like a multi-dimensional thing. They see you as a more trusted expert because Maybe they saw it that way, but you come along and as, as, as an expert, you change their mind. I think that's, I think that's amazing. Exactly. I'll give you another great example. I think I mentioned it earlier, which is like people will always say, come to me and submit an inquiry, say, I want the prettiest website in the world. But once you start asking those qualifier questions, mm -hmm. you realize, no, you want more leads. You think the way to get more leads is to create the prettiest website in the world, but you have no other strategy to other than have a pretty website. Well, who's gonna see the pretty website? Are you doing SEO to bring traffic to the website? Are you doing marketing to bring traffic to the website? Do you already have a massive customer or subscriber base that's gonna see the website? So just because you want, you can build the prettiest website in the world, but if no one can see it, how exactly. are you going to reach your true goal, which is getting more leads? So rather than us spending all of your money on building a pretty website, how about we spend a portion of your money making sure it can be found on search engines, for example, or making sure you can run some ads to drive traffic to your website. So that's a good example yet again of, as an agency owner or a freelancer, I think we have professional a professional responsibility to help peel back that onion and discover exactly. what they truly actually need and help communicate and articulate that so they can rewire their brain to realize, oh, wait, pretty websites don't equal more mm -hmm. leads necessarily. I need to understand my goal is I want more leads and how we get there is is what my agency is proposing to me. So I love it. I'm a big fan of uh, the five whys technique and it sounds like kind of what you're kind of doing there, peeling away the onion, always asking like, why do you want a prettier website? Mm. Yeah, because I want people to know that they can trust me, but why? What, what are you trying to achieve that? And that's also how you, Get to the right clients, I think, because those that don't fit your how, the why that doesn't fit your how, I don't know if that makes total sense, but um, you don't kind of want to work with them, basically. Um, I like right? that. No, I, I like that. <laughs> if their why doesn't fix your meet with your how, then they probably Feel aren't free. a good fit. So feel free to so use their it. Why, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's for everyone to yeah, enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it, it, it that, that could be a an hour call hour call uh, or or an, int or an interview itself i think we might do that um sometime in the future uh just I'm around. The, yeah just the just asking the right questions and how the how the sales call uh, should should go about i mean qualification is one goal of it but also it's to persuade them and i think the questions again have this multi-dimensional uh, role they help you qualify, but they also help help um, help them trust you more. It, it's funny, but asking questions is better. That's what I kind of know a little bit. Uh, this is not my interview, right? <laughs> but um, uh, I think that they're a very good technique in getting people to trust you. So um, that's something that I think we're well, kind and, of on the and, same you know, and, and I think to a large degree. Um, I think people, the agency should not look at it as like, oh, I need to persuade them or, oh, I need to convince them of something. It's more like you're coming from a place of truth, which is like, hey, you're telling me this, but I'm seeing this. Help me understand the disconnect. So you're telling me you want the prettiest website in the world, but everything else you've described means you want more business. 
So which one is it? Is it you want more business and you think that it's the pretty website? So it's to me, it's not about persuasion. It's really mm -hmm. just clarity. It's, clarity. it's creating clarity in ha so that you can understand what is needed so that you can be the most successful partner for their for their business. Man, that's really in the essence of it all. Good sales is helping people get clarity. On, on Amen. Clarity. Amen. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's exactly. We should write it. a book yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, just to just to keep the pace going, we were kind of close to the end. But um, I wanted to ask you, in terms of uh, any kind of agency tools for for project management or time management, anything that kind of stuck out for you in your agency life that you uh, so. Yeah, so uh, I use the company called FunctionPoint.com, which no one's ever heard of in our industry. Like, it's like very well unknown or very unknown, but I loved it because I could. It's very expensive for the record. It's probably outside of the scope for a typical mm -hmm. freelancer. I know there's a company called Estus, E S T U S dot co, um, that's up and coming. It's like I, I don't know if I'm allowed to even share that. I, oh, here oh, yeah. they are. I don't but know. it's it seems like a much more as long as they're not a website builder. Yes, you can. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, they're they're behind the scenes like building management. So as I, as my agency grew, I realized the importance of understanding how profitable is any particular project, how profitable is any one of my employees, where are problems arriving mm -hmm. in my five stage process, and billing management programs can help you do that. So there's tons of time tracking softwares out there. There, of course, there's the Asanas, the Basecamp. Um, uh, Trello, I mean, everyone knows all those, uh, but I really, I, I, I would say Estes.co has some promising uh, features. Also, Atirum um, seems pretty exciting too. Um, and they're more, in fact, they're very all-encompassing. Um, so, Atirum.io, A-T-A-R-I-M dot I. -I Atirum. Oh, okay. Not Atarim, right? <laughs> Atarum, uh, Atarum, Atarim. Atarim, ah, I think is okay. what they Oh, great, perfect. Yes, this is, I think, uh, okay, I wasn't sure if it was um, like a, a, another tool, but yes, I think there's so many um, like emerging tools like that that um, will probably reach out and ask if they want to give us something in return for linking <laughs> from this yeah, article. No, no, I'm no, just no. kidding. It's, I'm I'll just trying to think of out. ways to help. <laughs> But, no, but no, yeah, no. I use I use Function Point, but there's many other time tracking softwares. What it's all about is just understanding what's mm -hmm. working and what's not, and that's the foundation of time management and project management. Mm -hmm. It's to think, it's to uncover where are there problems in the business and how do I fix it, and that's and what, what to focus on first, right? Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. so. Love that. Thanks, Hans. How do you kind of keep? I mean, I don't know how. Now that you work in Therm with Thermageddon, you're developing that uh, era, let's say, of your, of your career, but do you still kind of um, keep up to date with, uh, with web development? Uh, development? <laughs> and uh, like, how, if, if you do, how, how do you do it? Like, do you have any favorite sources? And basically anything you can recommend to our readers or listeners yeah, here? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, so I'm not nearly as involved in web development. I, obviously, mm -hmm. we have our own website that I oversee and stuff. Yeah. Um, but if I if I were an agency listening to this call, I would join the Facebook group, The Admin Bar. The Admin Bar. Okay. It's a free Facebook bar. group. It's primarily focused on WordPress, hence, you know, The Admin Bar, which you see at the mm -hmm. top of the logged in Word, WordPress website. Um, but that's a community of over 5,000 agencies that are all, oh. all trying to help each other okay. with best practices. And I, as a former agency owner, I was always thinking that everyone else is my competitor and that, therefore I shouldn't talk to anyone else about yeah. what's best practice. And that's a mindset that I've completely moved away from and I'm embarrassed that I used to even think that way. Turns out there's a lot of people that are technically competitors that are out to help one another. And that mm -hmm. is a very very special thing that we have in our industry. I'd Certainly. love to see Visual Composer, um, you know, continue to uh, provide community help and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of interacting with other agency owners, I really, really couldn't recommend the admin bar enough. It's just, Perfect. 
why not take advantage of people that maybe a further, are a further along than where you're at that are willing to turn around and throw you some help? Exactly. And because they have people in front of them who are turning mm. around and throwing them help. It's a beautiful thing. So. Exactly. Beautiful. I think that's the word. And I don't think every industry has it. And having that is such no. a such a great It's special. Food. You should yeah. not ignore it. It's get over the fact the that like mindset. you they're competitors you got to get over that they are people that want to help others that are in our same space you can exactly. vent to the same people that actually understand you i mean I, I don't know about you but i had to i i couldn't i had to stop talking to my family about my business because they couldn't relate at in any capacity uh -huh. to the stresses i personally would go through right. this like communities uh -huh. like that they, like they just get it and it's just great I because of it. that so yeah and again i mean everything is related okay. again and these things are uh specific like kind of where would you go to ask for help but really uh, what i'm trying to say is basically um it sounds like it doesn't operate on a scarcity mindset and really that's no, that's a beautiful an thing abundance because mindset. there is yeah. exactly there is enough for everybody and even though we we might be both i don't know web developers we are each we each have our own strengths and weaknesses and you know you will help a certain type of business, I will help another certain type of business, and there's space and room for everybody. And maybe they need your help with one of their exactly. clients, or vice versa. Yeah, it, it's very, exactly. very beneficial. I wish I had joined much earlier. Um, so. We'll check it out. Um, perfect. Um, okay, we're almost at the end. Um, do, uh, do you have any strong opinions? Maybe, maybe that's the right way to ask it when it comes to the no code versus low code versus like coded approach to building a website like where do you fall in that spectrum yeah i, I actually know exactly where i fall i okay awesome I've had full stack developers, I've had back-end developers, front-end developers that were very intelligent, very skilled, very experienced. Mm -hmm. And very often we would have philosophical debates over a couple beers on um, how should websites be built. A lot of people like will poo-poo WordPress or like things like Visual Composer be like, no, every website must be built from scratch because that's the purest form of development. I'm like, <laughs> Well, isn't HTML built off, ultimately it's a derivative um, of ultimately ones and zeros. Like we're all building off something that's been built for us. Like, so we, I personally think that reality is that clients have budgets and budgets yeah. dictate how one can go about completing a project. To me, program pl uh, plugins and platforms like Visual Composer help drive down that cost so that your time can be used as optimally as possible to launch websites for clients mm -hmm. that don't have four hundred thousand dollars to build a website from the core scratch um, right. that, that, that so many developers like. So I guess I'm saying that as much as I would love to be a purist and say, yes, all things must be built from scratch. I'm also a business owner and I know reality, which is that people have budgets. So you can live in the ideological world if you want, or you can enter reality, which is you got to balance more things than just, it should be this way. Well, great. Have fun living that life. I would rather try to solve problems with the parameters that have been given to me. And that's why I'm a huge fan of uh, things like visual composer, hundred percent. Nothing to add here. You've said it all. <laughs> Thanks so much. I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, um, and yeah, we're at actually at our last uh, question for the for the for the interview. Um, what piece of advice would you say or give to somebody who is just starting out today as a web creator or maybe as a web agency owner, developer um, in that basically in that in that space? Like, what would you kind of um, What's the one best piece of advice you have for them? I know, so many. <laughs> There's All a right. lot. Well, you need to understand that first and foremost, if you're a one person shop, do not look at that as a, as a negative. That is actually your biggest strength. And that you may want to be saying our about page and say, we are this awesome company, we, 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 but it's actually just you, you, you. Demonstrate that you're a one person company because the people you're going to want to work with are the people that respect and cherish that so if you're a one-person agency just getting going use that to your advantage rather than as a weakness i'm not kidding you there is so many pros and cons 
to any way you run an agency. But if you're a one person shop, the pro is that your clients are gonna have a direct relationship with you. There's never gonna be a loss of communication between departments. That is your benefit. And, and so have a website that shows a photo of you, shows that you're a real person doing real work for real people. That is, so many agencies wanna hide the fact that they're not a one person, sh like mm -hmm. that, that they're mm -hmm. small. No, embrace it. Love and then this. point number two, learn how to say no. You got to learn how to say no. <laughs> um, and, and, and at the beginning, you're going to have to balance that out with the reality of like, you're probably going to also have to learn new things. So the mm -hmm. beginning, and that's the great filtering. If you make it through that, then, then you start to scale your business and, and get to start making some great money. So if you're a <laughs> one person web agency, embrace that yes. rather than hide from it. Um, okay. So that's advice number one. Like get your, mm -hmm. look, with, with Termageddon, I had, I've manually, I'm not kidding, I have manually reviewed over 5,000 agency applications. And I can tell you, I've seen a lot. And what I can tell you also is that when you come to an agency website and on the home page, there's the business owner right then and there, like just <laughs> confidently standing there saying, look, I'm your new partner, I'm gonna help you through this. Um, or at least on the about page, showing a real person and like a real background story. Mm -hmm. At least to me, that demonstrates, okay, this is a legit person with legit pride mm -hmm. and, and wanting to help people and like, great, like I'm interested in that. Yeah. So, um, so embrace that you're a one person agency because then you'll find the clients that embrace that fact and that will work to your benefit because that's exactly what you are. Don't hide, yeah. embrace it. Um, and then point number mm -hmm. two, learn how to say no to clients. At the beginning, you're probably gonna have to say yes to some things, openly disclose what you're, what's new to you and how you're gonna maybe financially benefit them. Be like, hey, this part's new, so I'm only gonna charge this flat fee for this thing I don't really understand, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna figure it out. You know, And that's, there's a lot that goes into that statement. But, um, but eventually you should get to a point where you know what you offer and you know what you don't offer, and you need to clearly be able to uh, differentiate uh, who's a good fit and who's not. Perfect. Amazing, both of the both pieces of advice. Uh, I just wanted to say, I mean, maybe this won't, won't also make it into the cut, <laughs> but I, I was a solo business myself for a long period of time. Now, now I'm working full-time with Visual Composer, but uh, at a certain point I met with people that were selling like this coaching program, I'm not gonna name mm -hmm. names or something. And one of their advice was, oh, you, you don't want to give off the vibe uh, or you don't want to be seen as a one-man business. Uh, so yeah, change everything from I to we and stuff like that. Even though for me, like <laughs> intuitively, it felt wrong. And actually that's when I start stopped selling stuff. Uh, my business stopped selling stuff after, I don't know, seven years of just continuously doing it. So like even on a kind of karmical level, <laughs> Probably it, it just doesn't work when you sort of yeah change I, or I, tweak So I I'm a huge I, I'm a big fan of good coaches, but for someone to tell you, hey, change everything from I to we if you're yeah. paying someone for coaching, which I'm not kidding, there are some coaches in our web development space where yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this person knows exactly what they're talking about. Mm. But if a coach is telling you things to lie that should be the red flag. Like that, that sounds mm -hmm. like a no, oh, yeah, absolutely. person. Like, and we can, maybe I don't understand the full context, but, but yeah, if probably. they're telling you to mischievously kind of hint at yeah. that, that you're something that you're not, to me, that would be a red flag. And I certainly would not pay for that, that coaching service. Cause I'd be very alarmed that they, it sounds like they'd be wanting to make me what they want me to be. No, you're but right. Now, they should be teaching mm -hmm. you how to make decisions for yourself on how to run exactly. your successfully. Well, let's say it was a hard one lesson. <laughs> but I mean, maybe that's for another call about coaches in general. I think yeah, it's an interesting there's topic. some good ones. I, I, I'm not kidding, there are some ones. I've sat in a presentation once and I yeah. watched this gentleman give his presentation and my jaw dropped because he took all seven years of my pain points, summarized them into like a visual as like, Here's how it all works, and this is what happened. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm like, yeah, you just you summarized all of my problems in a single visual that I like was ingrained into my brain. So I'm very pro coaches just having the right coach. So look at what other agencies have to say. Maybe even pick up the phone and talk to them. Be like, hey, saw you left this testimonial. I just want to know, is it legit or 
you know, are you, were you yeah. just trying to be nice? You know, you'll find the right ones if you look hard enough. Amazing advice. Um, yeah, uh, man, this is so cool. Um, I think it's gonna be, so, I, yeah, I wanted to say, I hope this is the reaction that people will have from our video or article today. Like, you know, we summed up a lot of stuff that people probably struggle with and having having this uh, in one place like this, it's gonna be, I think, a great uh, help. So we'll just make sure it gets distributed to the right people. <laughs> Thanks for coming uh, to talk to us today. I think uh, we're at the end now uh, of, our, of our chat. Thank you so much. Um, anybody who is, um, yeah, if you want to check out Hans's business that, um, uh, yeah, if you need a good automatic, autom autom oh my God, I'm going to say this again. <laughs> if you need a good automized privacy policy, um, like widget or plugin, go to termageddon.com, right? Is that, did I say it right? <laughs> yeah, we're, Termageddon is an auto-updating website policy auto generator built for agencies and their clients. So we have reseller programs, we have affiliate programs, but it all starts with us giving you a free license forever for your own website. We just hope you love it. And, that, and, and if you do, awesome, we'll give you the tools to help your clients get protected and make some more recurring revenue. Awesome, there you go. I wanted to give you a chance to to mention what your uh, what your primary business Appreciate is right it. now, and great. We hope to have you back, um, Hans, in, 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 on our blog and, and our, on our YouTube channel. So thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thanks so much, Philip. Right. I'm very happy and honored to be a part of this. I think this is anyone still listening. This is the future. I mean, I, I just am so appreciative that companies like Visual Composer are going out of their way to really help this industry grow and experience information that they may have not necessarily initially known to help them be more profitable and more happy with their agency. Thank you so much. Thanks for recognizing that. That's exactly kind of what we're trying to do. So, um, awesome. all right, see you next time. All right, take care. Take care.